From a young age, I never questioned why we ate meat, but it's because it was something that was so normalized. I knew where the meat came from, but I never thought about its process or whether it was edible or not. This was just the way I was raised, and it wasn't until a few years ago that I started to question it. I wanted to become a vegetarian after I saw a video of the meat making process, which permanently ruined my appetite. Then I thought to myself, why would it cause this reaction if it was something that was really natural? I started researching, and this is when I came across the vegan lifestyle. I found out it was a safe, safe way of eating for all stages of human life. Elders, children, and even pregnant women can live healthier by adopting a vegan lifestyle. Many people use culture and tradition as a reason to explain why it is ethical and acceptable not to give up meat. There have been many events all throughout history that were justified because it was traditional, and when we look back at it now, we realize how unfair and cruel it was. Tradition does not make something ethical. How can we kill a living thing without it being necessary? Even after learning all this information, I didn't become vegan. I became vegetarian, however. I noticed the changes immediately. I felt more energetic, was able to focus clearer, um, and had a longer attention span. I wonder why this happened and talked to other vegetarians. Most of them felt the same way after t transitioning to that type of a lifestyle. A year later, and I am here. Many say it is extreme to be vegan and promote veganism, but there is nothing extreme about trying to cause the least amount of harm to anyone, including animals. To me, veganism is not a restriction. It is a way of being that allows the best you to come through. Before, the only type of milk I drank was cow's milk, and now I have so many more options. I've tried soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, and so many more. Being vegan has allowed me to become more independent. I used to come home every day with food ready for me at the table. The second I stepped in through the door, I could smell my mom's delicious food. Although I miss having cooked food ready to come home to, I started looking forward to cooking for myself. I still eat some form of food I was raised with, but I have adapted a little bit. I have developed a skill I think all of us need to live a sustainable life. I learned how to cook for myself. As little as this may seem to some, I see it as an important life skill. Many people might find it as an inconvenience at first, but when it comes to life, inconvenience shouldn't have a say on whether you take it or not. It is worrisome that many people eat meat and other animal products without knowing the true risk. The British and American Health Association have conducted multiple studies where they found that there is a clear connection between consuming animal products and heart disease, type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, and high blood pressure. They categorize meat as a type 1 carcinogen. This means that it is at the same level as smoking. We bring so much attention and awareness to smoking, but where is the conversation about eating animal products? The information is easily found, I promise you. Many justify their actions because they don't know any better, but I am here today telling you, you can. This information is just a click away. I am not here to tell you how to live your life, but I am using my speech as a way of encouraging you to consider living a cruelty-free life. If not for the animals, do it for your health. We have decided that our taste buds are more important than a living being. We humans often need the feeling of superiority, even if it means at the expense of hurting others. Many say consuming animal products is what we have been doing since the beginning of mankind, but it is important to make it clear that they did it out of necessity. Most Americans today don't have that issue. We have many more affordable and cruelty-free options. It is our responsibility to find a solution to end these animal suffering. Thank you. Rachel and Max, you guys have always supported me through everything I've gone through, and I will forever be thankful. Kyle and Jacob, you tend to get on my nerves a lot, but you sincerely are one of the best friends I have. I'll miss you guys next year. Miss Blanchett, you have been there for me when times were tough, and I am so grateful to have you as my advisor. I look up to you and can only hope to be as successful and intelligent as you are. Thank you for your unconditional support. To my family, I am thankful for your constant encouragement and for always believing in me, even when I have trouble believing in myself. I am not a very open person, and we all have our struggles dealing with it. So thank you for your patience and always having my best interest.